Hello, the Cross Friends. Welcome to Kufel Action from Justin Chu Stadium at Trenton University, home of the 2022 Bagataway Cup. I'm Stephen Stamp, very pleased to be bringing you this battle that most people thought would be for first place in Kufel East between the visiting McGill Redbirds and the hometown Trent Excalibur. But a funny thing happened on the way to the first place showdown. McGill lost to Queens yesterday, 13 to seven, and they now can finish no higher than second. Trent has clinched first place. They're already in the Bagataway Cup as the host, but uh, they obviously are very pleased to be winning the division as well. McGill, with a win today, will finish second. With the loss, will finish fourth, which means if they win, they will play host to a playoff game and would face the Carlton Ravens. If they lose, they drop to fourth and they'll actually have to travel to play the Bishop's Gators. Or sorry, the Queen's Gales. So they'll be going to Kingston if they lose. So, an interesting matchup. Obviously a lot more on the line for McGill, but uh, they are dealing with some injury and depth issues, especially in the back end. So we'll see how things play out. We are ready to roll here. Trent in the green with the white trim and the shiny silver buckets going left to right on your screen. And in there, white with the red trim, the McGill Redbirds. 415 minute quarters of play to wrap up the 2022 Kufla regular season. And the opening draw goes to McGill. And they've already got a pole up in the offensive zone looking for a pass, but Trent with the hard four check pressure causes the turnover to get it. And here's Tyler Hendricks. Hendricks is stripped, so a couple of possession changes immediately off the bat. And there's a collision running the ball up the floor field was Logan Glick. And he collided hard with Curtis Romanchuk. And it looks like Romanchuk's going to go off for that one. Interference call. Okay. Just looked like a collision to me. There you go. So McGill with the immediate man up opportunity again. This means a lot to them. They would certainly love to be playing at Molson Stadium for the play-in game to the Bagataway Cup. There's a hard rip, the first shot of the game, and it looks like it's snuck through. McGill certainly, and there is the signal. The opening goal ripped in by John Miraglia. The first shot of the game, and it looks like it's snuck through. McGill certainly, and, and there like is that. the signal. The opening. The Redbirds jump out front. Their coach, Nick Subri, saying before the game, they've had a lot of injuries in the back end. They're going to have to do some things a little differently than they have in the past. They just don't have the depth that they've usually had with players dropping by the wayside. He also said, you know, you can worry about injuries, you can worry about all the different things that go on through the course of the season, it just doesn't matter. He's gotta go out and try to win. And they are hoping to build towards being ready to go on championship weekend. Of course, they've still got some work to do to get there. Right now, they've got some work done and they have the possession off the opening draw. Logan Glick wants, or sorry, that's, uh, that's another player that got that one. They do have some players coming in that have not played a whole lot this year. And that, that was Jack Busby that came away with that one. Sorry, I didn't have him handy on the list. So McGill slowing things down now a bit, obviously a bit quicker when they're on the man advantage for 30 seconds. Now they're gonna take their time, set things up, get the ball here to Daniel Chand. Chan fights through the check from Romanchuk. Gets one across to the far side and a hard rip. That one goes wide. Not sure if Jackson Brown got a piece of that one, the Trent goaltender. At the other end of the field, the youngster Joseph Beam between the pipes. A nice quick chat with his dad before the game. Seen him at many a game with it, where his uh, brother Jonah was playing. Brown. High lobbed pass, gets through, some pressure. It looks like, oh, Kate Tony may have been forced back over center. Nope, Trent has taken a timeout, heads up call. Not sure if that was the head coach, Mark Farthing. Riley Martinell, one of the assistants, the closest to the play, may have just screamed timeout just before Tony's foot landed on the center line. So Trent will retain possession 
It's a timely call. The Gatterway Cup will be here November 4th to 6th right here at Trent University, my alma mater, and the home of the 2012 the Gatterway Cup, I believe it was. 12 or 11? I think it was 12. We'll have to double check that one. Trent will come out. We'll see if they go with the set play or if they just uh, are just using the timeout to save the possession. It's going to be very close to center, so McGill may come out and try to force with some pressure. Yeah, it looks like well, they may just come and surround the man starting with the ball. It's going to be Colton Armstrong, no stranger to fighting through traffic. Yeah, they're just going to let him have an open start. Armstrong plays for the Halifax Thunderbirds in the National Lacrosse League. Comes through and gets a rip, but that one's wide. It will be Trent Possession. Closest man to the ball as it went out was Brendan Lundy. Fulton Armstrong getting the ball right now. Great story. A kid who played junior C pretty much his whole box lacrosse career in junior. Didn't play junior A. Wasn't drafted. Actually talked to me about when he'd be in the NLL draft. It turns out it was the year before. He didn't even realize he had been. There's a shot and a goal. Nice finish by Armstrong on the run. And Trent has tied things up just under four minutes into the first quarter here. It wasn't drafted. Actually talked to me about when Justin Chu Stadium. the NLL draft. It turns out it was the year before. He didn't even realize he had been. There's a shot and a goal. Nice finish by Armstrong on the run. You can see Armstrong with a quick step underneath. He's shown some finishing ability in every level of the game. But yeah, he wasn't drafted. Goes in place for the Peterborough Timberman in the Arena Lacrosse League and absolutely ripped it up. He and... Uh, Nick Finley, both had fantastic years for the Timberman, and that led to some big things for both of them. But there's a chance and a big thing for, Munt, for McGill. Rowan Burrell right on top of the crease. Takes the pass and immediately bangs it home. And you can see Trent having a conversation, wondering how they left that so wide open. Both had coming fantastic off the draw. years for the Timberman, and that led to some big things for both of them. But there's a chance and a big thing a Nice job for finding Munt that for open McGill. man. Rowan Burrell I'm right on top to get of the on crease. A little tighter. Coming into the game with 11 goals. Second only to Isaiah Cree and Cam McGinnis on the McGill roster. So McGill, two to one. They go back in on top right away and win another faceoff. The draw taken there by Sam McDonald once again. Burrell slowing things down over along the far side. Raglia gets it back at the top. Comes near side to Alex Erbstein. Erbstein's gonna head for the net, shoot and scores! Just running on his off wing. Takes that left hand shot and just sneaks it past Jackson Brown. Comes near side and Brown who's only Erbstein. given up 32 Erbstein's goals all season. Net, shoot and scores! Just running on his off wing. In almost Take seven games worth of play. Sneaks has been beaten Jackson three Brown. times here in the first six minutes of this contest. So McGill really coming out. We said before the game that the Redbirds had more to play for because of Trent clinching beforehand. I did talk to uh, assistant coach for Trent, Kyle Sorensen, before the game. And he said, I said, you know, take some of the wind out of your sails. You've already clinched. And he said, you know, we got to play the same way. We can't, we can't change it up because that won't go well for us. And so far... Trent's looking like a team that may have realized that they clinched first place. We'll see. They've got lots of talent, lots of depth and veteran veteran leadership. So we'll see how they work on turning things around. Here's Romanchuk spinning underneath, flips it back, gets to take Katoni. Katoni recently signed with the Albany Firewolves in the National Lacrosse League after spending his rookie season with Panther City Lacrosse Club. He's going to toss it over to Armstrong. They're going to wait and get their final attacker out. Well, the final omitty anyway. Armstrong backs near center. Watch there by Ethan Forgrave playing a two-way midi roll. Tony loses the stick. Ball's still in it. It's not in there when he goes to pick it up. And possession awarded to McGill. I think they were going to get it anyway. And here comes Forgrave. Oh, nice trail check by Armstrong. But Forgrave swats it away. And they're going to call a loose ball push in the back. 
on Trent, and that will give possession back to the Redbirds as we near the midpoint of the first quarter. On this beautiful day here in Peterborough, the very northern end of town. Hermstein gets it across to Dylan James and gets the return pass. Watched closely by Landon Pater. Miraglia, who got the Redbirds on the board with the first goal of the day. He's trying to break down the far shoulder. Yeah, maybe a step on Jaden Sample, but Sample recovers, forces him back out. Redbirds will restart. That pass got away, but there's nobody near Dylan James who can casually track it down. There is a shot clock in Kufla this year, if you're not familiar with it. There's a goal, number four for the Redbirds on the day. Pretty simple play, just kept coming in off the wing. And a little bouncer Dylan past James Jackson Brown, as you see. There is a shot conversation. It's getting pretty animated year. already. Not Looks like Curtis there's Connor, a goal. one of the veteran leaders. Number four for the Redbirds. On the day, some direction, letting guys know where they need to be, what they need to be doing. Conley will set it up right back in the on the outskirts of the crease. As there's another faceoff and another McGill win. That one's scooped up by Ben Busby. Busby flicks it ahead, and Cameron McGinnis. Moves the ball into the offensive zone where it's passed on to Rowan Burrell. McGill gets their subs in. There's a drive and a, kind of an off schedule shot. It looked like Alex Erbstein was just being very casual, not really looking like a threat to shoot, and then just quick release gets the stick head up. And bounces one far side, a little cross body. Changes it up on Jackson Brown. And there's a drive. Again, just the off schedule coming shot. late. You can like see that Trent slides. Alex was just being very casual. has been a bit Not slow, really and that's made the slides like late. Five to one. And of all the potential starts to this game, this is probably not one many people envisioned happening, but when you have a team that it means a lot more to, sometimes... That can make a big difference. These two teams have been the top two in Kufel East for most of the past decade. McGill comes in, having finished either first or second in the East every year since 2011. The majority of those in first place. They will not finish first this year. Trent has already clinched that. means if they uh, that they will go to a, straight to a semi-final at the Gadaway Cup on the Saturday. There's some heavy defensive pressure. Holden Lowe's popped the ball loose, but it is picked back up. McGill has it, but Cameron McGinnis slips, regains his balance, and look at him make the short pass through the high pass instead. That one's going to drift up over the stick of Isaiah Cree, and Trent will get possession. He'll be picked up there by Macron. That pass to Katoni. Katoni didn't quite connect. Conley tries to get it. But it's Burrell that comes away with the ball. Here's Isaiah Cree trying to create. And you'll see the McGill players creating on their own quite often. I mean, honestly, there's not a lot of, not a ton of assists. On the McGill roster going up and down. Dylan James has the most with seven. And, uh, you can see that uh, they tend to have a bit more American style, tend to have a lot of American players. And that means a little more dodging on their own. When it's effective, it's effective. Trent, a uh, few more assists. Brendan Lundy with 13. Tyler Hendricks with 12. Colton Armstrong with 13. Oh, I'm looking at goals. Never mind. <laughs> Brendan Lundy with 10 assists. Tate Katoni has 12. He's got six goals and 12 assists. 
He's known as a real shooter, but he has taken on a real setup role here. So you're going to see a bit more the traditional Canadian style field game here. A lot of box influence, obviously, with all these guys playing the box game. Hendricks up to Katoni, cross to Armstrong. Oh, and faking far side with the pass, and then Cole Hanrahan just buries that one. The 18 goal scorer coming in, leading Kufla. Makes it 19 with a beauty. Up to the far top corner. And just a little look to the far side, the far post. Backdoor pass. Oh, and ending. Faking and far then side boom. with the pass. Hammers it home. Cole Hanrahan. Up to 5 2 as we're to go in the first quarter. It is running time through the first 58 minutes of play. All right, 2.18 to go here in the first quarter. 5 to 2 for McGill. We're about to get back underway. Sam McDonald for McGill. Up against Holden Lowe's and another faceoff win. This one to himself by McDonald and moves it on. And McGill back to the attack. Really enjoying the benefit of tons of possession so far in this game. Trent's had a string of really terrific faceoff men over the years. Holden Lowe's is a good one, but today McDonald definitely getting the better of him. Colton Armstrong. Couldn't quite get that pass. It was a bit behind him. Went to track it down, but racing out racing him to it was John Miraglia. Miraglia will take this pass back. Looked like he was thinking about just letting it rip there. Holton Lowe's watching him pretty carefully, ready to step into the shooting lane. As of right now, we can't see the shot clock. The, the league bought... Shot clocks, the teams are, uh, are getting shot clocks. There will eventually be two for every uh, for every field, but for the time being, the, uh, the order was just able to be filled for one at least, to make sure there's at least one per field. So of course, it's down facing the timers table over on the far side of the field. But in the future, we will have two. I think it's a huge step. And here's a chance, oh, off the post. But it's tipped back in, it goes off the defender. The original shot hits iron. It bounces off of Logan Glick going and trying to help his goaltender. And Joseph Beam over on the far side. Agonizingly the watching field. that one trickle past a huge step. That is a tough a chance. break for a oh, goalie. Off the post. But it's tipped back in. It goes off the defender. The original shot hits him. So Trent pulls back with him 5-3 as we get into the final 30 seconds of the first half. We may barely get this draw underway before the quarter comes to a close. Holden Lowe's, I think, maybe trying to ensure that we barely get it underway because he is taking his time getting out there. The slow walk to center. Then clamps down, actually. They have won that draw pretty cleanly. Rips it out, but then it's going to be scrambled. It will be picked up. Landon Pater gets it. See if Trent has a chance to move the ball forward. Actually, they're stripped. McGill's going to look for a last opportunity. Can't have much time left. Oh yeah, we've got about nine seconds on the clock. That one's gonna be thrown. It goes over, back over center. That'll be Trent possession. Nice little spin by Lundy and tries to force it ahead to Hendricks. Doesn't quite get there. And that will run things out for the first quarter of play through 15 minutes. It's McGill five, Trent three. I have Steven Stamp. This is the final game here at in Kufla 2022 regular season. Thanks for being with us. We will talk to you in about two minutes. Welcome back lacrosse friends. We are ready to roll with quarter number two. Trent now going right to left. McGill with a five to three lead going left to right. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is the final Sunday of Kufla 2022 regular season. Next weekend, we'll see the playoffs to determine who besides Trent will be at the Begataway Cup. And there's a rip right off the draw. Losing the stick was Cameron McGinnis, but that doesn't matter because he put the ball in the net. Absolute blast. And you got to wonder, actually, because it looked like his stick hit the body of the Trent defender. May have changed things up a little bit. Throwing a bit of a curveball at Jackson Brown. There's a rip right off the draw. Losing the stick. McGill has now scored more goals than Trent averages giving up in the net per game this season. You can see the conversations between Brown and his defenders. Pretty animated. He's talking to Macron and 
Caleb French has been out. Yeah, French is out there, the high man in the little triangle. Curtis Conley, the multi-time All-Canadian. Trent with possession, off the draw, and Armstrong fighting through that check. Draws and dishes, they go behind the net. Hendricks thought about getting one quickly out. I'm sure that was Lundy thought about making that pass. Instead, he's gonna slow it down. Tony will get it over to Holden Lowe's and they'll set, set things up. Back to Tony again, the setup man. With a dozen assists on the season. Might have one more, that one's just a little bit wide. Hard sidearm rip by Armstrong. Gets out behind the play though and Lundy will start things back up. Lowe's. Heads across to the top. Feeds Armstrong. That's a nice save by Beam. And a quick outlet pass gets it to John Meeks. And Meeks moves it on in a hurry. Ben Busby gets it ahead. That's a nice outlet, but the save by Brown. What a beautiful play by McGill, resulting in the shot by Alex Cowgill. Who has three goals on the season. McGill, such a young team this year. Really rebuilding, they've had a lot of guys graduate. Of course, they were affected more than anyone by the pandemic as we lost the 2020 season and then McGill opted to cancel about half of their sports last year, including men's lacrosse. So they did not get to take part in the Kufla season last year, which is a pretty tough blow for a lot of players who've gone there for, obviously primarily for an education, but with the idea of playing some high quality lacrosse as well. Here comes Owen Howard. Fights through a couple of checks. Tries to get the feet across. It is grabbed there by Daniel Chan, but Chan has a player all over him. He's thinking about getting a shot. Trail check though. Boy, Armstrong is just a menace. Misses that pickup though, and the, McGill gets it back. Here comes McGinnis. Quick release by Isaiah Cree, but it goes wide. Looked like he may have been forcing that one a little quick. He sensed that the slide was coming. He wasn't going to have much time to set for his shot. Play about to be blown in. Here we go. Rowan Burrell hands it off immediately. Gill rotating around the top, getting there to Josh Jewell. Jewell on the run shoots, but that one's swallowed up by Brown with the outlet pass. Nicely led to Caleb French, and he's on the run. Pole to pole, Conley rips it. Shades of his Gataway Cup overtime goal years ago. When he was a freshman, scored a huge game winner to really stamp himself as one of the up and coming. Nicely led to Caleb defensive and, and transition threats in this league. And he does it pole again. To pole, Conley it rips it. it. See a lovely Shades little pass. of his Gataway Cup overtime goal years ago. Perfect timing to get it to Conley. And that's just way too much space to give him. He is always dangerous. Curtis Romanchuk stepping up to center to take the draw for Trent. Up against Sam McDonald as usual for McGill. Looks like there's a bit of an issue with the 30 second clock, so that's getting adjusted. And we're just about ready to roll. Just have to wait for one of our wonderful volunteers to get back across the field. So the score 6 4 with 10 and a half to go here in the first half. McGill holding on to the lead that they have established early. You can feel the momentum shifting towards the green a little bit. Now Romanchuk looking to get possession back for the Excalibur. Now for procedure call. Using the foot on Romanchuk and McGill will get possession. Quickly up into the offensive zone. Still going to make some changes though. Before Grave will wait. Before Grave was drafted by the Saskatchewan Rush. 
He's signed with them. I believe he's going back to camp in, in a few weeks. We go to X. Quick pass out. There's Cree letting one rip. That was soaked in front. Scooped up. And off goes Aiden McLaughlin. Quick pass ahead. Ty King, trail check. He was looking one side. The sweep check came around from the other. And McGill gets it back. And they're going to try and push the pace here. There's the cutter in the middle is the defender. Oh, the nice opportunity for Logan Glick. Looking for his first goal of the year. But may have felt the nerves a little bit because he didn't quite get the shot he was looking for on that one, I don't think. A little steep on the high to low. They do retain possession. And Glick hustles back to pick up Tyler Hendricks in the offensive zone for Trent. Meanwhile, the offense for McGill going back to the attack. Burrell at X. Deep X passes across. Chan trying to swing through. Nice two-man defense. They do get the shot pass out to Isaiah Cree, but again, he's wide with the shot. Morell will start things up. Miguel flattens out their attack line. He does a prison break approach, but the, uh, the pass doesn't connect and it rolls all the way back over center. First man there was Logan Glick, but that's an over and back and Trent will take possession. Conley was up in the offensive zone. Now he's just saying, calm down, let's settle it. We let Roman Chuck come across, and the LSM is going to head to the bench and get another, another attacker. Right. It'll be Colton Armstrong, the O Midi. Looking for the pass from Holden Lowe's, but he was picked up by Forgrave. So Lowe's is going to push it down into the corner instead. Lundy gets to Armstrong. He's got some room, rips it, scores. That is almost exactly where he put one earlier. Armstrong with the beauty rocket from the outside. Nice setup. And Trent has pulled within one. And the McGill lead is feeling less secure by the minute as we approach the midway point of the second quarter. Lundy gets to Armstrong. He's got some room. Rips it, scores. That is almost exactly where he put one earlier. Yeah, they're getting serious here because the Armstrong ACDC is the coming up. Rocket from the outside. McDonald again for McGill. And Roman Chuck with the win. Best Ben Van Galen impression. Van Galen was a brilliant LSM and faceoff specialist for Guelph years ago. Won a ton of draws. was so dangerous. Taking that long pole up into the offensive zone. Hand off from Sam Albert. Over to Catoni, let's keep it moving. One more sub to come. That will be Armstrong once again coming in as the sixth attacker. And there's Forgrave on him. That's an interesting matchup. Forgrave obviously getting the duty to keep an eye on Armstrong. You can see him traveling with Armstrong wherever he goes pretty much. We'll see if he follows him all over the field. Forgrave, one of McGill's leading scorers. He's got eight goals and five assists coming into this game. Armstrong's pass across to Catoni. Finds Hendricks. Oh, Lowe's with a little sidearm sweep shot just wide. Everything went very smoothly in that Trent possession. Really nice movement. Just missed. At the last second, comes out to Armstrong, he bobbled it. Now he's lost completely, it's picked up by Busby. He's gonna try and push the pace the other way. Armstrong's trailing and curtails the opportunity, but it's handed off to Forgrave. There's a quick pass and a hard rip. I guess the opportunity wasn't curtailed as Cameron McGinnis buries that one. Nice heads up play by Busby to be very aware of the trail check Push potential. Armstrong, Armstrong's spin around. Trailing. And then and Forgrave to Busby the to the back of the net. Handed off to Forgrave. And McGill a goes up pass and a hard rip. I guess the opportunity wasn't curtailed as Cameron McGinnis buries that one. Go, 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 
Roman Chuck back to the dot for Trent. He's had some success. See what McDonald can do to thwart him on that. And McDonald was in good position, but Roman Chuck just shoves him off the dot. But it's McGill coming away with the ball scooped up by Herbstein. Pass doesn't connect. And Connolly a little bit zesty on that check. We call a loose ball foul. Fans here at Justin Chu Stadium don't like the call. They thought it was a well-earned possession by Conley, but the ball on the stick of the white with red trim McGill Redbirds. Burrell operating from X again. They rotated completely around the horn. Now they're completely around with Dylan James getting it. And just keep going, get it to McGinnis. Watch there. De-sticked. And ball is stripped and taken by Caleb French. Great possession change there by Caleb French. Jackson Brown looking for the long bomb to Curtis Conley. Can't quite get it. And it's going to go back the other way immediately. Meeks on the run. McGill pushing it. They've got Forgrave coming off the bench. Maybe still a chance. That, that pass almost looked like it kind of diffused the breakout attempt, actually, because Forgrave was on his offside, had somebody coming to pick him up immediately. So they're just going to settle down and go to the set offense with this two-goal lead. 3.30 to go here in the first half. Great having you with us. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is Kufla Action on Lax Sports Network. Very pleased to be back on LSN once again. And we are planning to have the entire Big Adderway Cup on LSN. So make sure you stick with us. Again, November 4th to 6th here at Justin Chu Stadium at Trent University. Backdoor pass doesn't quite connect. Looked like it might have been in reach for Josh Jewell, but just got away from him. And Trent will take the ball. It's going to be Brown starting with the ball back behind his goal. Over along the far side. Under three to play in the half. The patient clear and Browns sees the space. He's just going to keep going. Oh, I want to see him go the whole way. Hands it off to Lowe's and he'll retreat to his crease. Don't see a goalie goal very often. It'd be fun to have him see him have a go. Here's Katoni spinning. Pretty good check. From Busby, but it leads to a goal in the handoff. Play set by Katoni and then ripped home by Tyler Hendricks. Have a go. Here's Katoni spinning. Pretty good check. And Hendricks coming in with a dozen Busby, goals. But it this leads season. to a goal in the handoff. Play set by Aiden McLaughlin back out to take draws for, take this draw for Trent. Pushes ahead, tries to go after it himself. Big battle is scooped up there. Austin James had it, gets stripped, but swooping in to grab it was McLaughlin, and Trent will go back to the attack. And they're back within one goal with 1.22 to go in the half. Tony dodging with speed from the from the shoulder. He's going to toss it back up to Armstrong. Lowe's is just joining the trend attack. He'll take the pass from Carl Armstrong up at the top. Not entirely sure if Trent could hold for a last shot here. They don't generally waste a lot of time. Letting the clock tick down. Now we have a penalty coming. It's going to be interference. Looks like it'll be Erbstein. So Trent with a golden opportunity here to even things up. That one's not going to pan out, but they will get the ball back. Hanrahan closest to the, to the end line. About 25 seconds 
for the Excalibur to use. Hanrahan's rip actually turned into a pass. Nicely caught by Lundy up to Katoni, and that is a laser. Sam Katoni's been a setup guy a lot this year. Came in with just six goals, but he can absolutely rip it. Saw that in the Man Cup. We had a terrific series stepping in to a bigger well, role for the Peterborough Lakers. Hanrahan's rip helping them win turned into a their pass. fourth straight. Nicely caught by Lundy up to Katoni, and that, and that is a laser. A sign of what he Sam can Katoni's do. been a setup guy a lot this year. Came in with just six seven goals. seven with 17.9 to go here in the first half. See if anybody can get something quick going. Otherwise, we're gonna go to the second half of the brand new start. McDonald, Roman Chuck. McDonald pushes it ahead, tries to scoop it himself. Roman Chuck runs over someone who tried to come and help him, Henry Camosa. They do come away with the ball, and they score! Crazy little finish to the half. Great job, it's actually Alex Cowgill. Sorry, not Camosa, it was Cowgill. Roman Chuck runs over someone who tried to come through, kind of poked Camosa. the ball ahead. They do come away with the ball, and they score! Crazy little finish to the half. So Rowan Burrell once again for McGill. And just like that, they're up eight to seven. And boy, that one only took nine seconds or so. So maybe somebody can score with seven seconds left. Nope, it's gonna be an extended battle at center. Roman Chuck will flip at the length of the field, but it will go wide before it lands. The buzzer will sound to end the first half of play. I'm Stephen Stamp, this is Kufla on LSN. Thanks for being with us. It's 8 7 McGill. We will be back in 12 minutes with the second half. It's 8 7 for the Redbirds as they start up the attack in quarter number three. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is the final day of Kufla's 2022 regular season. Again, playoff games to come next weekend. McGill will be involved in one. Will they be at home to Carlton or will they go on the road to play Queens? We're going to find out in the next 30 minutes of running of playtime. Conley, nice move in the rip and the goal. Wow. Drags it down, goes around, and buries one to tie it up just 40 seconds or so into the third quarter. And that road. is a beauty from the long pole. Play Queens. We're going to find out in the next 30 Conley minutes. with four goals time. coming into the game. Conley, He's got a nice pair today. Nice move the goal. Wow. Drags. You see why it's not even a disadvantage for Trent when he goes up and plays in the offensive zone. He's, he's just as adept with the stick as many a short pole. There are actually some teams that will run offensive sets with a long pole up there. I remember China at the 2018 World Field Championships in Netanya, Israel, would do that all the time. Put a guy up on the crease. And that's an interesting approach. Ball tracked down there by Sam Albert. He spins back away to let things set up. Tony comes on the field. They lob it over to the near side to Brendan Lundy, almost said Dalton, that's his big brother. Lundy going to the net. Oh, nice attempt, gets the shot off, but Joseph Beam turns that one aside. Beam with the 3.86 goals against average. Very impressive numbers. Jackson Brown for Trent, averaging 4.74 goals against. So again, both teams scoring as they are capable of doing, but giving up way more goals than they're used to. We'll see how things go after 15 in the first half. And Trent striking first and the second to tie things up, 8-8. Eight, eight. Hanrahan lets Hendricks pick up that ball. Hendricks, who was recently signed by the Toronto Rock. Very excited to be heading to camp with them when things get rolling. Here's Katoni. 
Nicely turned, but they create an opening, a great finish. Colton Lowe's just slips over to the back door. I think a lot of attention being paid to Colton Armstrong, who just kind of backpedaled out of the way, let home, let home, let <laughs> Colton Lowe's step into that space. And Katoni hits him with the an pass. Opening, great finish. A little sidearm shot. Very similar to one you took earlier in the, the game. Where he missed a lot net. of attention. Fairly substantial. This one, Armstrong though, didn't miss a thing. He picked the corner. And Trent has their first lead of the game. They're up 9-8. Just over three minutes into the third quarter. That boat rolls all the way down to the defender, Logan Glick for McGill. They push it ahead. McGinnis under all kinds of pressure from Caleb French. Nice flip pass to Burrell. Just gets away from him. He recovers. Won't be able to get the shot. Bumped by Conley and goes into, ah, uh, they're going to say a loose ball push. Conley says he had the ball, but the ball popped out. Burrell was just recovering possession. Conley thinks he had it. The ref says he doesn't. And yep, ref wins that argument. As usually seems to happen. McGill goes back to the attack. Trying to even things back up. Burrell to the near side to Isaiah Cree. Herbstein slips by one defender. Nice slide help from Sam Albert. But he drives to the net and scores. What a great finish by Alex Herbstein. The athletic dive out across the top of the crease and tucks it home. We're 9-9. Slips by one defender. It's got to be one of the higher help. scoring games. From Sam Albert, but he drives Among on the net leading and defender. We've seen a, scores. You know, a lot of times what a great down finish by Alex Erbstein. They have given up the athletic dive out across. 9-9 with 25 minutes left to play. It is a track meet today. The 80-second shot clock, I don't believe has come into play yet in this game. May not. Unless somebody can pull it ahead to a bit of a lead. Nice pickup by McDonald to take that draw. Gives it up immediately, and McGill goes to the attack, looking to continue the momentum they just established for Grave. Look to McGinnis, it's going to go down to Cree instead. McGill's still changing, Forgrave's going to head off. Definitely seems to be playing more of a D-Midi role, and that goes along with what Nick Subri, the head coach, was saying before the game. He said, you know, we've got so many injuries. We've got hardly any pulls left. We've got a shortage of D-Midis. They've had, I think, their three, the top three D-Midis on their depth chart are out with injuries. So you're seeing Forgrave play a really strong defensive role. Putting a lot of time. Focusing on Colton Armstrong. And then running some other players through more of the offensive sets because he did come in to this game for Grave with eight goals. Trent with a nice solid clear and they get it over to Armstrong. And four Graves are about to come out. And immediately heads over into the vicinity of Armstrong, has a quick look at him. And yep, matches up right away. That's Armstrong with the ball, Forgrave on him. Flicks it down, they move it around. Here's Lundy up to Hendricks. Armstrong takes it. Inverts with Lowe's. Didn't like any of his options, so just left it there for Lowe's. We'll let him to get something going. Tony up high. Looked like he was thinking a shot may come to him there. It didn't, so he's going to recalibrate. Once Handerhand to clear out, give him some space behind X, and now he's going to go up to Handerhand. The low pass. And Handerhand just keeps the head of the stick low and then rips the ball high. Put Trent back out in front, 10 to 9. Beautiful shot. And the Excalibur back in front. Once Handerhand to clear out, give him some space behind X, and now he's going to go up to Handerhand. The low pass, and Handerhand just keeps the head of the stick low and then rips the ball high. Put Trent back out in front, 10 to 9. Beautiful. 
believe that's two for Hanrahan today. Can move 20 on the season. Fighting for that Kufla goal scoring lead. And all Canadian nominations are due Tuesday. And voting will take place so they can be ready to go for the Gataway Cup. And uh, you've got to figure the caliber will be pretty well represented. Again, Trent has clinched first place in the East with their 8-1 and one record. Bishops and Queens. Just behind, they both with three losses. McGill with three losses. Penalty coming to McGill. Trent scores, and they didn't even have their sixth attacker on. They just had Jack McAlpine running out to join the, the offense as that pass and the jumping dunk shot makes it an 11-9 lead for the Excalibur. Trent scores, and they didn't even have their sixth attacker on. They just... So Holden Lowe's his last goal with his little sidearm sweeper that went down into the very bottom corner. This time he had to get high for it to get the pass. But bounces one back down. And Lowe's makes it a two goal Trent lead. And they have possession off the draw. Scooped up immediately by James Austin. He will make a heads up play to drop it over to Aiden McLaughlin. Which is roll it onto Jaden Sample. And then Sample will leave for Katoni. And Trent back to the attack. Oh, the pass takes a bit of a funny hop. Goes past Katoni, and that's going to be a turnover on the over and back call. Cameron McGinnis looking to see who he can give the ball to. It's going to be Erbstein, and then McGinnis will head down low. McGill once again setting up their offense. And again, Forgrave has gone off. Really focusing on that D midi roll. Nice duck underneath. Sidearm rip there, but Dylan James fired that one well wide. Will be McGill possession. Rowan Burrell's going to start with the ball. Already down to the final four minutes here almost of the third quarter. They've had five goals in the quarter, so not quite the pace of the first half, but still pretty, pretty solid scoring going on. It's still four minutes to see what these teams can add. McGill's gonna wanna try and get one back, but that won't help them as Romanchuk picks up that loose ball on the hop. Nice little outlet pass to Conley. Conley gonna push it and try and get a hat trick today. And hand it off to Hendricks and stays up in the offensive zone for now. Now he's heading back. Hand it off to Lowe's. Oh, Conley was duping. He's heading in now. Oh, and he wanted that ball from Lowe's. Now he gets it. And he will let it rip. That one's wide, though. And now he'll head back. And this time he means it. It's a Steve Priolo-esque little uh, feint. It just looked like he was going back and then just spun and raced into the offensive zone. Nobody near him. They did get a little contention on the shot itself as he wound up. Here's Lowe's circling, looking to Katoni. Tosses it to him now. There's McAlpine. Oh, but he's stripped. Forgrave, nice little outlet pass. Here comes Cowgill. Great soak by Trent. That pass was just a little out of the reach of Cree. Caused him to wait for a moment for it to get there. And that gave Conley a chance to get over. And he is stepping a little gingerly. He's not going anywhere though. He'll just go and pick up McGinnis. Conley tough as nails. 
Just keeps on playing. Now he's going to pick up. Man coming from behind the net, Daniel Chan. That pass out is wide. That's going to be Trent possession. Jackson Brown getting it. McGill left with nobody behind the net. Burrell tried to sprint back there, but Brown, the ball got out quickly, so Brown was able to just zoop in behind his net, past the post, and get the ball back for the green and white. Katoni hands it off there to Armstrong. Tony looked for a moment like he might pass that one up to the ref. Went to Armstrong instead. Now back to Armstrong. He'll spin and have a look. Couple of players behind the net for Trent. Now Hanrahan slips up. Looking for the pass, but they go to Lundy. He'll circle around. Tony and Hanrahan goes back behind the net. That rip from Hendricks was wide. And Hanrahan will start with possession. They've had Roman Chuck up in the offensive zone for that entire offensive shift. Now he's going to change out, and here comes McAlpine. He's open at the top. Good defense, though. Didn't really leave much of a chance for Armstrong to get it to him. And it's turned over. McGill already into the offensive zone. Great wheels from Ryan Bedore. Isaiah Cree thinking about the shot. Goes in close. Saved by Jackson Brown. Great move. Macron may have limited a bit of the angle for Cree, but now the four-check pressure. And Ben Busby almost got it back. Now it'll be Col uh, Rowan Burrell. That ball was just tipped away from McGinnis. Heck of a job by Austin James to take away the quick catch-and-shoot opportunity. And McGill's going to have to slow things down. We have a timeout by McGill, I believe, with 27.8 to go here in the third quarter. So the Redbirds will try and set things up. Again, they, they led 8-7 to seven after their goal just before the end of the first half. And since then, it's been 4-1 to one for Trent. What a glorious day. I'm not even sure what the temperature is. I'm going to check. It's well into the 20s. Nicely turned, but they create an opening. Great finish. Holden Lowe's just slips over to the back door. 22 degrees. Herbstein. High of 23 today. Defender. Glorious weather. Nice slide help. Take three days of this. Sam Albert, but he Cup drives on the net. And yeah, November 4th to 6th is the Big Adderway Cup. great finish by Alex all Herbstein. the games, again, yeah. on the Lax Sports Network. Wants Handerhand to clear out. Give him and on the Kufla YouTube channel. The low pass. And Handerhand just keeps here. the head of the stick low all and weekend. rips the ball high. Of those games. Next weekend are the playoffs. That's when we find out who besides Trent will be there. Trent Kevin scores. They didn't even have their sixth attacker run. They just had Jackson Calpine. Running out to join the They have first place. Western, if they beat Laurentian today in their game, they will get second. That would make Western and Guelph tied at 9-1 and one atop the West Division. But even with Western beating Guelph yesterday 7-6, uh, the Griffins beat the Mustangs 12-5 back in late September. I think it was the 25th. So that gives them the head-to-head -head edge. Brock is on track to finish third. They're 5-4. If they can beat 0-9 Laurier today, that win would give them a tie with Toronto at 5-5, five five, but they did beat the Varsity Blues both times they played this season, so that would be the tiebreaker from them. It's looking very much like number one Guelph versus number six Laurier in the West next weekend. Western, the two seed against McMaster, the five seed, and then Brock at number three against Toronto at number four in St. Catharines, that's the difference with that tiebreaker because they are actually going to be tied at five and five if Brock can pull out the win today. Again, that would be just being worrying. He has not yet won a game. Here's a drive and the shot didn't really get anywhere near the net. Burrell tries to pick up the loose ball. I think McGinnis is going to come away with it. Flings it out and they tried to get a last second shot off. There was not much time left to shoot for Dylan James. He shot before he had the ball in his stick. Given the the way that the time went, he probably would have been late if he'd waited for it to actually get there. So, good effort, doesn't work out. Good D by Trent, and we will go to the fourth quarter with the Excalibur leading 11 to nine. Our Stephen Stamp. This is Kufla Lacrosse on LSN. We'll be back for the fourth in two minutes.
Outside the order of finish in Kufla East. Trent, we know will be first, and they lead this game 11 to nine. McGill trying to come back after holding the early lead, the lead for much of the first half, and going to the half ahead 8-7. Now down 11-9. If they can win, they'll get second in the East. Nice save, Jackson Brown. And Trent will head back up the other direction as Brown has the ball himself and will just stroll forward. You saw him go all the way into the offensive zone last time. They're watching him now. And Conley, looking for the long pass, decides to go a little bit shorter on the near side. Connects there with McLaughlin. He rolls one across. It's a bit of a, bit of a risky play. Roman Chuck came away with it, but then was had it knocked down. And Trent is going to use another timeout. They used one like that in the first half to avoid giving up a possession when Tate Catoni was being pushed back over center. And they'll do the same thing here. Just hang on to the ball when it was about to pop free. So the Excalibur will have the ball with just over a minute gone in the fourth. Okay, just to update you on the playoff situation for the East, Trent finishes first. They have a bye to the Begataway Cup. So with the first place finish, they will go straight to a semifinal Saturday where they will meet the winner of the game between the second place team in the West and the third place, the third seed, sorry, the second seed in the West and the third seed in the East from the Friday night. So if Trent holds on today and wins, then McGill comes fourth. That's assuming that Queens beats Ottawa. And Ottawa hasn't won this year, so we shouldn't uh, necessarily assume a Queens strong favorite to beat Ottawa today. And uh, that would put McGill in fourth. Queens would be in, in third. Bishop's in second. Carlton is locked into fifth. So Carlton is going either to... They could really go to McGill or Bishops. So it would be Carlton at Bishops if Trent if Trent wins and Queens wins. It would be Carlton at Bishops and McGill at Queens. If McGill can come back and win, they will host the Ravens and Queens will travel to Bishops. It's a hard pass fake and then kind of slowing things down from Brendan Lundy. The pass doesn't get there. Oh, what a hustle play. Not going to wind up in possession, but great, great run by Colton Armstrong in a very athletic play. To pull that one back into the field, hoping a teammate was there to pick it up. It was not. Trent's going to get called for offside. They had seven players in the defensive zone. One was going to change. They're just going to stay out there. Roman Chuck will play it, and that will result in the whistle being blown, the flag lands. <coughs> so McGill trailing by two, golden opportunity to try and get one back. Connolly, Ron, and French are the defenders for Trent, and they will immediately get possession back and be able to kill this penalty. So McGill just kind of frittering away that offensive chance on the power play. Brown lobs one ahead. It's Conley. Oh, what a rip. The others were high. This one goes hip high past Joseph Beam. And that is a shorthanded marker for Curtis Conley, his hat trick goal. He might just match his season's total of four goals coming into the game today alone. 12 9, the Excalibur pull ahead. A little over 12 minutes to go here in the fourth. Again, talked with Kyle Sorensen before the game, one of the assistant coaches to Mark Farthing, along with Riley Martinell. He was saying, you know, you, we can't just turn it on, turn it off. They may have had it turned off a little bit to start this game. They were not looking sharp, not looking like themselves, especially defensively. The, you could see the 
conversations after the McGill goals as Trent's slides weren't really working. The recognition wasn't great. Trent goal by number eight. But they've tidied that up as we've come along. Still, they're not going to be thrilled giving up nine goals, but they've got to be happier getting the 12 now and the three goal lead with 11 and a half to go here. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is Kufla on LSN. Here's McGinnis. Burrell again at X. Forgrave is out there for the offensive set. You really need what he brings, so they're going to push him into double duty. And he gets a rip, but it's a little bit wide. Will be McGill possession. Forgrave taking on the old Nick Tchaikovsky role from Trent, where he would just play up and down all over the field and be one of the best players at every spot. Now, I'm not saying Forgrave is Nick Tchaikovsky. He's one of the best players that's ever stepped on a Kufla field. But he is taking on a big role. Here's a drive to the net. What an effort to maintain possession there by Daniel Chan. And gives McGill a chance to keep things rolling. That's Forgrave. He'll switch spots with McGinnis and lob it over. It's Patrick Aber. That pass is low. Kind of handcuffed. Chris Parkinson. Sorry, that was uh, Daniel Chan. And again, we're going to have a holding call on McGill, which will give possession back to Trent. Jackson Brown is directing traffic, takes the pass there from French. Mac Run with his best Curtis Romanchuk impression. Just fight through the traffic and get the ball up ahead to the offense. He's heading back. And we'll get congratulations from Conley and Jackson Brown who strolled third of the way up the field to say good job. Trent taking their time. This is where now, with under 10 to go and a three goal lead, Trent may start to push deeper into the 80 second shot clock. Lowe's looks at Lundy, gives it to him and immediately gets the ball back. McGill so far seem fairly content to sit back a bit again. Not a ton of depth because of the defensive injuries they've had. They may feel like they can't start pushing and going hard too early. But Armstrong with the shot, it goes off a defender out of play. And Armstrong just kind of grabs the stick of Ryan Badur and spins him around. Tony, or sorry, Lowe's uses the legs to corral that ball and gets it over to Katoni. He's running through the check from Cowgill. Cowgill slips. Oh, what a save by Beam, but he doesn't know where the rebound is. Now he's back in place. He was looking to the far side of the field. It was back here on this side. Handerham was able to grab it, but there wasn't a lane. He had to kind of head down low, probably around goal line or maybe even a bit lower with his feet and didn't have a chance to put the ball back immediately. Here's Lowe's. Now Glick is coming out, putting some pressure on. Hendricks around the pick from Katoni who takes the pass. Again, watched by Forgrave. This time on Katoni, he's been, again, spending a lot of time on Armstrong who has it now, rips it. That one's blocked. Ball's down, tapped away by Cowgill. He's gonna go and try and get it. Okay, he picks it up. I'm not sure why he swatted it the last time instead of just scooping it, but he does come away with it, and Cowgill got the bottom hand checked by Armstrong. They get tangled up and both go to the turf. McGill is going to slow things down with possession and get their offense set as they make their changes. Here's John Miraglia, scored their first goal. Seems a while ago. It's been a quick game, though. Some kind of adjusting to the 60 minute games rather than the old 80s, the 420s that we used to play. I like it. I know the teams with the big rosters like to have the, 40, the 80 to get everyone out there. But I like the intensity of the 60 minute games. And there's some spinning and shooting. That one gets blocked. It's going gra to be grabbed by McGinnis as it couldn't get through off the stick of Herbstein. And Miraculous is just going to back away and reset things. Gets it down low. That shot didn't have a whole lot on it. Brown with the save. Rebound pops away from Jaden Sample. And McGill will get it back. Trying everything he can to create a shooting chance. And Dylan James was able to get a shot on net, but 
didn't have a whole lot, didn't really seem to challenge Jackson Brown, who makes the, yeah, maybe he just made it look easy, maybe tougher than we think. A little cross check to the back of the helmet there on the ride by Patrick Aber. And then that's a great diving wrap check by Dylan James to knock the ball loose. But it turns back to Trent as it just bounced past Bedore and hustling in was Cole Hanrahan. He whips it across to Hendricks and now Lundy coming back out to the top. Chance there for McGill. And Dylan James is heading for a change, looking a little tuckered. Maybe a little frustrated. Miguel has to feel like they had this one in pretty good shape, but Trent is such a strong team. You know they're going to battle back. Under six to play. Excalibur hanging on to the lead, hanging on to the ball right now. With Gatoni spinning. Gets the pass through. Looked like there was some traffic in the way, but it does get out to Hendricks. That shot goes off his stick and way up under play and bounces down to the track and across. So he's going to have to go pick up some balls over by the fence. Gets loose, but Lundy's the first one there. They must be late in the 30, in the 80, because he just let that one fly from way downtown. Just trying to get something on net. McGill turns it the other way. Here comes Herbstein. He'll go for a change after giving the ball to Chand. Five minutes to go as McGinnis takes it from Forgrave and quickly across, finding Josh Jewell. Burrell operating up behind the net, Conley right on him. Forgrave with a chance, scores! Had Brown thinking far side, pulled it back near pipe and tucked it in. What a great finish by Forgrave, and he's leading his team to say, let's get off, get our changes, get to the center. Sam McDonald comes running on to take the draw. Uh, they can't make Trent hurry, though. <laughs> McDonald is ready to roll, and Roman Chuck. The slow stroll up to the dot. It's quite a quick jump by McDonald. I think it may have been a bit too quick, but no call. So perfect timing, and McGill gets the ball back after their goal to make it 12-10. Under four minutes to play now, and the Redbirds going right back to the attack. Here's Forgrave, who scored the last one. Roller across to Erbstein. Sorry, Josh Jewell. Jewell watched there by McLaughlin. Here's Forgrave, gets a shot off there right on top of him. Roman Chuck was coming out to challenge. That may have been enough to force that one wide. Not sure he could really get the hands through the way he wanted to. Burrell will start with it on the reset. And restart, I should say. Chan trying to generate something. Get to Forgrave, he fires that one's wide. That was a pretty good chance. He had the time, just enough to get the quick shot off as he wanted, but he just missed. Back on that near pipe for us. It was a far pipe from where he was. He shoots again, that one's wide again. And again, possession to McGill. Racing towards the back line was Jewel. He's got it now. 2.45 to play. Little rocker step. Chan trying to get in, but defenders all over him. It's goosed ahead by Sam Albert. Ball still loose. Big hit there from McLaughlin. And Brown has it. A little behind the back flip over to Roman Chuck. 2.10 to go. And it's going to be McGill ball. It's the heavy checking on Roman Chuck. Knocks it loose from him. It rolls out of bounds. And here comes McGinnis. Final two minutes. We are into stop time. The bouncer swallowed up by Brown. 
Start to race. He will, oh. Violation by Brown. That's going to turn the ball over. McGill, McGill gets it back. Patrick Aber will start with possession. Burrell slips by his check. Comes out to McGinnis, whose shot is about four feet over top of the net. It's about a meter and a third for anyone who doesn't know the old Imperial system. Lowe's out there playing some tight D. A shoulder juke. Didn't create much, so here's Dylan James. And back to Miraglia, who dropped the pass. Tries to snag it out of the out of midair. And it is tapped back and will be picked up by Dylan James. Time running down on McGill. It's got 115. It is enough time. McGinnis driving to the net. Scores. What a beauty. Does it count? <laughs> Looks like it is going to go. So 12-11. Great play by McGinnis to race in, fight his way through the check from Armstrong. We've got a tight one. 109 to play, a one goal lead for the hometown Excalibur, defending the river. And McGill trying to make an incursion. They're within one. Possession critical on this draw. Pulled back by Romanchuk, but McDonald fights his way through. It's going to be a push on Trent, and McGill has it. Remember, they scored with just seconds left in the first half. They've got lots of time now. Final minute of play. They're going to take a timeout to set things up. And with one minute left, McGill trailing 12-11. We'll try to get one here, and you never know. They might just try and get two. See if they win in regulation. If we do have to go to overtime, it will be sudden victory. I've been told not to call it sudden death. Apparently it's too morbid for the executive. Oh, we're going to go to 105, the precise time remaining. I take it back. Sounds like you're going to be one minute. Our scorekeeper had it right the whole time. Our right clock runner. She nailed it. It was perfect. I don't know why they were even questioning. So interesting to see what McGill sets up here. you got to think they're going to have Forgrave out there. Be looking to him. I mean, Isaiah Cree came into the game as their leading goal scorer with a dozen. Relatively quiet today. Rowan Burrell usually sets up at X with 11 goals entering the season. Cameron McGinnis scored the last one and a beauty that was. He had a dozen coming into the game as well. So lots of options. They do have, actually they do not have four grave out there. I'm really surprised by that. Got McGinnis. Dylan James, Rowan Burrell already heading back behind the net. Aber over on the far side, looks like he'll start with the ball. Herbstein, number 33, and on the near side, 22, John Miraglia. And here we go, final minute, one goal lead for Trent. Miguel trying to even things up, driving is Herbstein, double teamed. But gets through them both, gets a shot off. That's blocked. Roman Chuck tries to grab it. Armstrong trying to pounce on the ball. Bounces free. McGill almost had it. But then it's grabbed by Caleb French. His stick is helicoptered out of his hand. They're going to call a violation. Oh, it's going to be a violation on Trent. Illegal procedure. So McGill gets it back. They've got 27 seconds. Still time. They let one rip. That's wide. 22 to go. McGinnis will start with it down by the goal line. Here's Burrell. Dodging through the middle. Switches hands. A little chest save by Brown. I think that one kind of messed him up a little. But 
Roman Chuck comes away with it. He'll just fling it the length of the field, and that should just about do it. We've got five seconds. They've got it. They whip the ball the length of the field. There's a chance. Now they're going to run out of time. The heck of a play. They actually put Stephen Pelliccioni in to play net, maybe because he can throw the ball the length of the field like that. But the Excalibur will go in to first place through the front door. They will finish 9-1 and one and claim first place in the East. Of course, they're off to the Begataway Cup as the hosts. They will go in to the semifinals. McGill will finish fourth. And that, as we said earlier, means that they're going to be traveling for their playoff game next week. They're going to have to they're going to have to go and play at Queens as long as Queens beat Ottawa today. I haven't seen that result yet. And uh, Carlton will go to Bishops for the other Eastern playoff game. And of course the games in the West there will be six teams in the playoffs because they do not have the automatic host bid. Very exciting finish to the regular season here for Kufla 2022. Playoffs next weekend. Go to kufla.ca to get all the information. Follow us on Twitter. Thanks for being with us today. Make sure you join us in a couple of weeks for the Begataway Cup live on LSN and the Kufla YouTube page from Justin Chu Stadium in Peterborough, Ontario. I'm Stephen Stamp. It's been an honor to have you with us for the game today. We will see you next time. <laughs>